I think what we're looking at longer term is a much more hair trigger Chinese response to any type of perceived U.S. infringements of Chinese assertions of sovereignty and territorial control over Taiwan. We've kind of turned a corner in this relationship and we're heading toward a less stable and more riskier place. America's determination to preserve democracy here in Taiwan and around the world remains ironclad. Speaker Pelosi's visit to Taiwan has come at a time of particularly high tensions between the U.S. and China. The Chinese government has been alleging for a long time now that the U.S. government is seeking to change its relationship with Taiwan, which is embedded in these decade-old documents called the Three Communiques. It is a serious violation of the One China Principle and the provisions in the Three Sinod U.S. drawn the communique. The speaker's visit is totally consistent with our long-standing One China policy. Nothing has changed about our One China policy, which is guided, of course, by the Taiwan Relations Act, three joint U.S. PRC communiques, and the six assurances. What we're seeing is a calibrated rollout of sort of manufactured rage about this visit. The Chinese government wants to communicate to Taiwan and to the United States that it is willing to undertake and to threaten potential military activity in the Taiwan Strait to push back against what it sees as moves toward Taiwan independence and U.S. support for such a move. We said we do not support Taiwan independence. We will not engage in saber rattling. We will continue to operate in the seas and the skies of the Western Pacific as we have done for decades. We are not at a moment where China is preparing to invade Taiwan. That is not something that the Chinese could undertake technically in terms of its forces and military capabilities. The U.S. government through the speaker has firmly communicated that it will not back down to Chinese threats regarding Taiwan status. Congressional delegations to the United States have been visiting Taiwan for decades. What is significant here is that Nancy Pelosi, of course, is second in line in terms of the presidency here. The Chinese government hates Nancy Pelosi. In 1991, she and two congressional colleagues went to Tiananmen Square two years after the Tiananmen Massacre in Beijing on June 4th, 1989, and unfurled a banner memorializing the victims of Tiananmen. And this infuriated the Chinese because, of course, they want to have the Tiananmen Massacre be forgotten. Facing deliberately heightened military threats, Taiwan will not back down. For the Taiwanese government, this is a really important, high-profile validation of what it sees as its existential struggle against the People's Republic of China's ongoing efforts and intensifying efforts to essentially strangle it economically and diplomatically. We are in the run-up to Chinese President Xi Jinping's crucial 20th Party Congress in October. I widely expected that he will take this unprecedented step of getting a third term as China's paramount leader. Xi Jinping does not want to pick a fight with the United States as he's dealing with the preparations for that.